Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Above the Bar podcast, where each week we belly up to the bar with a new guest, find out what they do, who they are, and what makes them great. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. All righty, folks, it's your host, Sean. We're back to your belly up to the bar. I'm going to let you know a little bit behind the scenes. I messed up. Our guest is already amazing. He was on time. He does look, and it's pretty perfect that he looks, if you're watching the live, like he could be a cast member or like an extra from Sons of Anarchy, since <laughs> they are they are a band from, uh, he is the basis for the band Sages from Sacramento, which was part of the whole show and everything. So I think it's pretty fitting. So joining us live, and I messed up by not downloading their song, but I'm fixing it right now. And it, we're going to have to find out if he's cool with the song that I grabbed real quick. But joining us live, it's Matt Franks. <laughs> That's awesome. That, that, dude, you didn't realize. It. What's up, Eric? Already Eric Labonte's joining us here. Look, So, all right, brother. I grabbed, and you're going to have to tell me if it's okay, Master of Time. Oh, matter of time. Matter of time. I, that's how quick I read it. Yeah, it's, it's an older tune, but that that's all is it good. good. I mean, we can go with that. You're yeah, can go with it. We're gonna go with it. It's gonna have and look, folks. I jacked it up so bad, so you're gonna get to listen to a part of it. I didn't do a fade in. I didn't do a fade out. I didn't decide what part of the song I like. So you're just gonna hear whatever the hell I play at that moment, and then Matt can go. Man, this guy's jacked up. He's messed up like polio. I can't help it. It just is what it is today. I didn't think about it. I was playing with other stuff. It All happened. good. But before we get too far into it, Matt can make fun of me later here. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, getting some house cleaning done. As always, folks, over my right shoulder, we got the big board for sticker and a cause. Say you've got your own band. You got something you believe in, something you support. Could be another podcast. Could be anything. You reach out to us on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, X, uh, Instagram, even anything you can think of social media wise, even our uh, email is the above the bar podcast at gmail.com. Let me know what you got going on. I'll give you where my PO box is. You mail me out a sticker. We read about you live on the air. So everybody can know what you got going on. We support you like you support us. Now, now Matt, you're out in Cali. You got to talk. Yeah. We got to talk about our, our sponsors. Okay. The parent, their parent company is actually a California company. Okay. Company called Budget Blinds. You ever heard of Budget Blinds before? <laughs> budget Blinds, yeah. Look yeah. at that. See? Well, this is Budget Blinds of East Greenbush and Budget Blinds of Hudson and Cooksaki, New York. They are offering for the month of December 30% off of all motorized window treatments. So you reach out to them. Say you're looking for drapes. You're looking for shades. You're looking for blinds. Whatever it is, you let them know what's going on. It'll be 30% off of all motorization. Let them know that you're there to belly up to the bar. Hudson, New York, Kuksaki, New York, or East Greenbush, New York. Those locations, they're there to help you out. Once again, it's budget blinds of East Greenbush and budget blinds of Hudson and Kuksaki, New York. All right, Matt, house cleaning is done. That could be the fastest house cleaning I've ever done in my life. <laughs> just because I'm like, son of a bitch. Thank you, Matt, or Nate. Uh, you know, I messed it up. You know, everybody make sure you go follow Nate. Nate's probably, he's a horrible fantasy football picker, but he is a good dude. You know, I love <laughs> We will laugh at mess ups. You look, we accept that we, we mess them up. So, all right, brother. So, so real quick, Matt, as we're getting into this. So the band is Sages. Correct. Yep. And for from a social media standpoint, folks, if you want to see what they've got going on, almost everything they have is, at we are sages and it's the word r a r e not the letter w e not the game that you played from nintendo w e a r e sages we are sages uh check out what what they've got going on uh in a moment here i will have all their stuff up so you can actually get a chance to listen to them <laughs> and whatnot but so how long has the band been together though matt um so in total, I would say the band's been together almost a decade, but they we've had sort of a couple of um, renditions. So we iterations. Yeah, we had a hiatus for probably two to three years, mm. um, and the the 
the rendition that is uh current with sages or whatever is like what i consider like sages like i feel like sages is finally where it needs to be as far as like with the lineup the vibe um the songwriting everything so um yeah it's i not to get too too in the weeds with it but i consider sages kind of being together over the last three years pretty much okay so, now yeah. that that brings me up to a curiosity question then so as far as this iteration of sages mm -hmm. are, are we talking like original sages was you know uh, what's let me think of a good one like blink 182 and now we're into something totally different like like how does that work or has it still been the same type of music yeah it's it's in the same ballpark um so sages originally was a five-piece band um two members are gone and and um so we're a four-piece now we brought in a um a new member so it's it's three of us that were from the original lineup. Actually, to be honest with you, I'm not even from the original original lineup. <laughs> you're, you're not even in the we, OG lineup. Yeah, yeah, we can get we can get way into. Are you Ringo? Stuff. Are you Ringo Starr? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's it's we're still in the same ballpark as far as songwriting. I mean, we've always been a rock band. Um, I would say that the songwriting today is probably a little more song oriented, not so maybe riff oriented, if that makes sense. Uh, help, help me understand what, what's the difference between riff oriented and song oriented. I feel like, like er, the early days of Sages was, it really was centered around like really, uh, technical guitar riffs uh, uh, like uh -oh. all the drums were accented like or you know all the riffs were accented with the drums like it was very um yes again, it, 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 like it was good but it, it it's just very like very kind of new school i mean i i don't know i hate putting labels on stuff but whatever it's probably more in the the gent gent side of of things um definitely more metal driven um the stuff that's out today you know the ep that we just released it's like i mean there are those elements like i mean we still rip hard and it's still heavy but um it's it's like it's it's more about like the song not let me show you how technical i can be right so listen guys let me show you how i yeah. can do this. this is absolutely the best thing you're ever gonna hear right, it's right. Not like it. you guys are actually it sounds like you went from a very like like you said technical putting it together when i think of technical I, I tell you the first band that comes to mind to me is yes mm -hmm. like that's yeah. a super technical mm -hmm. like i think right. i heard your drumstick lay on there for half a half a beat too long right. we're redoing the whole song and it's like bro it's like i don't even know what you're talking about where yeah. now you're actually enjoying yourself more yeah and i mean um you know in in all in all I guess fairness or for full transparency. I mean, Sages is is kind of the it's essentially the 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 passion project of our singer and main songwriter Dino. I mean, Sages started you know in his computer in his home studio. So I mean, it's really easy to kind of start like when you're writing everything you know, in the box and you're programming all the drums and like, it's like, it's one person. Well, it's going to get really like, like very, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is, but it, like very scoped, very like one dimensional, right. you know what I mean? Um, and I, through adding members and taking it to the band form, you know, it's like, well, when you're playing this stuff live and you're kind of, to, in, you know, taking in all of our influences as well, you know, our individual influences and our playing styles, it really kind of opens things up to like be a, a bit more of a, of a collaborative effort and more, I think the songs just naturally kind of come to fruition that way. I mean, it's not, it's not like bedroom rock. It's like, okay, we're a rock band, you know? Bedroom, okay. <laughs> now you're, you're, that's a term I've never, <laughs> yeah, never no, heard of. Yeah. And I've got I've got a lot of kids, so um, laptop uh, rock, I guess I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, first off, Dino's got one of the coolest names. I mean, he does. He does. <laughs> like that name is just screams rock and roll. Right. I, I still stand by the greatest name in all of rock and roll music. 
uh, back when you could call a band this, he called a band this, which would be Ronnie James Dio. Right, you know? right. <laughs> I mean, how can how like when people are like, no, 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 like Ronnie James Dio had the greatest name in all of rock and roll history, and had bands like and would do songs like Rainbow in the Dark, and we had a band. There, here's a heavy metal piece for you. Do you remember the band Rainbow? Absolutely. That was a, that yep. was a like was a jamming yep. hard rock band. Oh, Could yeah. you imagine that band today? Ladies and gentlemen, Rainbow. <laughs> right. That band, that band's not making it happen today. <laughs> so, so you take it. I guess what I'm kind of curious of is, as we're uh, we're downloading, and I actually was able to download a second song, and you can tell me. Yeah, I'll I'll give you as dealer's choice here once this one's done downloading. Um, so on a hiatus for three years, what brings you guys back together? Um, I, I mean, guys, that's that's how I get wordy. So you you might have to kind of keep wordy it away. Going. This yeah. shit's downloading right now. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I think. Uh, COVID probably was a big part of it. Um, as ironic as that sounds, like everyone's, you know, quarantining and isolating and we're like coming together as a band. Um, I, I think I think that that COVID kind of opened up the opportunity for us to have the availability to work together again. Um, you know, Dino and myself personally, like I, I, you know, Dino's one of my closest best friends. So when we weren't playing music together, it wasn't like, well, we don't have a relationship otherwise. Um, you know, I think he was going through some stuff. I think he just kind of needed to step away from music for a little bit and, and kind of, and recenter and maybe appreciate it a little bit, you know, just like, you know, kind of one of those things where you don't know what you got till it's gone. And I think he had to miss it. Um, and being that, you know, he, he really is the, 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 you know, I mean, he's the idea, man. He's the heart and soul of sages. Um, you know, there's no Dino, there's no sages. So, um, you know, he was kind of off doing his thing. And then I, I got busy doing other things. Um, Ryan, our guitar player, you know, he was playing in other projects and then COVID hit and it's like, whoa, like we're all just kind of like, I mean, we're still doing our thing, but we're a little more available than than we have been. I get it. And, yeah, and um, and then uh, our drummer Chris has been a longtime friend of mine, um, and I have always kind of been loosely kind of bugging him to like, hey, let's do something together. Let's do something together. And he's always been really busy with other projects, and um, so COVID hit and. I think I, I, I don't know how it got started, but I think I, if I'm not mistaken, I think a couple of us ran into each other and then it just kind of sparked like a, Hey dude, like what's so-and-so doing? I haven't talked to him in a few months. Like, you know, and then it was like, what are you doing? I don't know. I'm not doing anything. And then a few drinks later, and then here we are, we're like, we're, we're back in a studio together making music, you know? So you guys lucked out the few drinks later didn't end up like, <laughs> dude, watch what I can do. It was like, right. yeah, let's put a band back together. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of opportunity really. It happenstance through, through kind of COVID, you know? Well, well, let's, so while the sec, we can even do two songs. This is the great thing about it being my show. I can do whatever the hell I want to <laughs> do. That's the cool part while the other one's down. Cause the other one that's downloading right now is fire. 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 I think that's what it said. Its name was. Don't, uh, don't, don't say that. Don't say like, fire like I, don't know what I'm talking about. A, I mean that's news to me if there's one it, it's fire. yeah it says the sages fire video youtube Ooh, i don't know if that's us the sages no. that's no. not you no no, no there's no. no that with us oh <laughs> see, see this is why we have these conversations <laughs> this is why i i i god folks i am normally so disorganized but this is extra bad um, I think YouTube is, you're pretty much only going to find like older stuff. Cause I don't know that the newer stuff we just put out, there's anything on YouTube. It's pretty much Spotify and iTunes. Oh, uh, cause see, you know, well, we're going to go with this one. Cause this <laughs> is the one I could get downloaded. Yeah. And then, and Matt was so kind to me that he wasn't like, dude, you're just such a horrible person. <laughs> so we're going to play this one. We'll see how far we want to go through it. So this, this is, so this song matter of time, this is about four or five years old. 
Yeah, so this is this is at the tail end of like the the first iteration of Sages, but we do play this song live. So, so this so this is the even though it's from the the older version of yep. man, this still gets out there. This still gets a little TL, TLC, huh? Yep, exactly. All right, here we go. I'm sorry. I forgot I was playing it. That yeah. shit rocks. Like I heard the other song. That song, listen to me. <laughs> you'd have been like the band, you'd have been one of them bands that when I was in high school, my buddies would have been like, dude, these guys fucking kill. <laughs> like cool, man. That, I appreciate Thank you. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate dude. Like, and I'm going to have to give a shout out to Dino. He might be channeling some Ronnie James Dio there a little bit. I mean, that yeah. voice, is, he's got a legit, you know, I, yeah. I always say for rock and roll voices, for me, like, I, I stand by Ronnie James Dio is still the best. After that, Rob Halford, you know, is is number two for me. But fuck, man, Dino's, yeah. Dino's yeah. got some fucking pipes on him, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, he's he's... He's frustratingly good. <laughs> Don't you? We all know that guy where you're, where they're yeah. like, oh, I'm not sure, man. I, maybe I'll play a song, and then like singing another, like fucking jamming out. And you're like, bro, like, like why? Why are you playing that so good? You didn't even know ten minutes ago. You never even heard of this song, and now all of a sudden you're killing it, right? Yeah, we all know that. But what well, that always brings me up. This is probably one of the most curious things I have about like song singer songwriters and musicians in in general do you guys have a songwriting process where like you said dino is the heart like he is so he's an original like sage was him yeah so what has been that process does he come in and go okay matt this is the the bass riff i need you to play you know ba drums i need you you know what they call the drummer right in a band oh. What's that? Or, or the, I did that joke backwards. It's what do they call the guy that hangs out with the band? The, <laughs> the drummer. <laughs> uh, so, but I mean, for for you guys, what is that process for writing a song? Especially because a lot of musicians I talk to are like one person, mm -hmm. you know, may, no, really no more than one. A lot of times, like this is a whole thing. What's your process? Yeah. Um, so our process, it, it starts with Dino for sure. Um, it kind of goes back into kind of what I was saying, like with the evolution of Sages. So, you know, and talking specifically about Dino, he's singing is not his forte. That's not how he got into music. Dino, Dino's forte, like his, his, his instrument is guitar. Um, so, you know, when he started Sages, I think that's why it was so technical. I think he was trying to kind of come into his own as a songwriter and as a vocalist and and essentially a producer, producing his own stuff, programming the drums, mixing it all, mastering it. Wow. So, you know, so like, but I think there's a lack of confidence there because it's something, it was a world that he had never tapped into, you know? So he, he kind of, the early versions of Sages or the early version of Sages was really like catering towards his comfort zone, which is guitar. So I'm like, so as he was writing these songs, like the, the early part of Sages is all Dino, like you know, from start to finish. Okay. He presents the band with this thing. You learn your parts. There you go. You know what I mean? With room oh. for like he's not like some, you know, dictator. Like he, 
He wants you to okay. play my music. Yeah. I have presented it to you. Exactly. Not that we have anything different. Do we understand each other? Right. It wasn't but, like that. No, but but like that, like the songs are done, start to finish. Now in Sages, he'll present us with finished songs, but with the idea that he's like, I want, I want to like go in in a direction with like what do you hear here matt like what do you hear chris like put oh, your cool. put your interpretation on it and we'll mess with arrangements and and so so the process hasn't really changed a lot other than i think i think we've kind of come into a confidence and kind of come into a place to where like we're comfortable in just writing song like we don't care what people think about us as far as like oh that's not heavy enough or that's not riffy enough or that doesn't fit into this genre or whatever like we could care less i mean when you listen to the ep we've got a straight up breakup ballad on it and we've got metal songs like we don't you know what i mean but but it's all sages somehow some way dino being that link i mean with his voice and and stylistically how he sings i think it kind of brings it all together but I'm getting out here, but yeah. So the process starts with Dino. He'll bring us demos and then we all just kind of like fine tune it and hone it in. And like, I'll put my parts on and Dino and the rest of the guys will either dig it or they won't. We'll work on it together. Same with the drum parts, same with Ryan's guitar parts. You know, he might be like, Hey, I hear this little variation. What do you think about that? And Dino might be like, Oh, that's cool, dude. Yeah. Make, make it more you, you know? And then, then we'll have a song and then we'll track, the song and and mix it properly and then you know so but it all starts with dino i mean dino is the he he's he's the mastermind please tell me that love ballad because i haven't heard it sounds like poisons every rose has a thorn please I'll, tell me that's I'll what it sounds it. <laughs> huh? i said i'll tell you it does <laughs> but it doesn't does it come on uh i i think it's better to be honest because oh, i mean that is to me that is the ultimate like we're a hard rock band. And let me just sing this song where I'm so sad. Right. <laughs> and you're like, where did this even, because back in the eighties, every good hard rock band had to produce like some kind of a love ballad sure. so that the lead singer seemed like, look, there really are musicians. They can do this. Right. Right. You know, so you gotta, you oh, brother, it's so amazing. <laughs> so, so you guys put it all, you put it all together that way, which, you know, I, I love the fact that you say that Dino was is this driving force, but he's not a dictator. He's not, you know, chase chasing guys out of the band and doing those things. Now, as far as though, once it once it all comes together for you, do you or maybe this is probably a better question. Do you guys work with each other in those tones? I know you said like guys will come to it sounds like everybody kind of bounces it off of him, but. You know, you said you've known the drummer now for a long time, finally got him into this project with you. Do you guys work with each other? Like, I, I'm lucky I can play the radio. I love music. I've always been into music. I have no no talent with an instrument at all. But do you, some of you play multiple instruments and go back and forth with each other and say, hey, man, like you, you playing bass, I don't know if you also play like a rhythm or a lead guitar and you can say to, to Rick, was that the name of Rich? Ryan. Ryan, see, I knew it was an R. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even got into this bottle that much. I mean, it was, it was. Uh, but like, do you ever go to him like, hey, man, I hear what you're playing. Change the tone this way or that way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's a collective and it's a collaborative between the four of us. Like like Dino, Dino wants that. Dino kind of like like hands us, you know, he'll, you know, hand us the cake or whatever. And then it's like he's like you guys put the frosting on like he almost is like i kind of want to remove myself from it because i want i want this to be i want this to be us not just me you know what i mean so yeah all all, all the the songwriting that we do you know together it's it's all in our studio like we don't really you know i mean we file share for the sense in the sense that like it's convenient and it like helps us kind of learn material but like like we get together every week. Like we we're very old school when it comes to like getting in a room together, like, you know, and, and, and doing it organically. Like, I think that's, I know for me personally, that's, that's what I enjoy. That's why I play music in bands. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I could be, I could do stuff on my own. Sure. But I, it doesn't give me the same, I don't know. It doesn't give me that same no. 
you know, collaborative artistic kind of feeling that like, I want to be with other people. Yeah. That, that whole, like, yeah. Hey, you go in the studio, we'll play your part. Then right. we'll, we'll send that over and you can do it. I, I definitely will say that there's definitely, there is absolutely something to be said about old school house band playing with a musician working right. together and figuring out the sound together. Yeah. I watched some old Sinatra clips where he, used, that's the way Sinatra did it, you know, right. with big 95 piece bands all around him and all yeah. of his backup singers and him just standing there going through the process. Yep. Now, now speaking of, of that process though, I mean, the studio sound is amazing. I, dude, I'm telling you right now, folks, listen, if you're just tuning in right now, we're talking with Matt of the band Sages. Uh, it's Sages, not the Sages, just Sages. And the, all their social media is at We Are Sages. Check out what, what they've got going on. But I'm going to tell you right now, that out, I mean, if that's the tone all the way through all the other albums, I've listened to a little bit. It just, that was the first time I had heard that song, Matter of Time. Yeah. That song just crushes, dude. I mean, that's like, I need to be in, in a car going stupid stupid fast for no reason <laughs> down a straight road and praying that there's no, no uh, cop cars on this road. Cause that's, it's got that, that vibe to it. Like cool. th this is designed to drive stupid amount of fast to that. You should not ever <laughs> like, I'm going to even go as far as like, it's got the vibe of the dude who either like in a movie, it's the two thoughts that come to me. Okay. It's got a movie vibe theme where either the dude it's nighttime and either he's broken up with his his girl and the lights from the road are flashing as he's going too fast. All right. Or, or the other one is he's driving way too fast because he's got to get to that. He's got to get to that spot because he's got to save his buddy. <laughs> it's got those vibes to it. My Dude. buddy, uh, George of Outlaws podcast. Look, folks, Outlaws. George does like 75 shows a week. He is an animal. He is amazing. I love his stuff. His son is like. I think his son's already run the world cup four times. He's a hell of an athlete, uh, but check out what George's got going on, but he wants to know what are the venues, uh, any, any venues coming up that you're going to be performing at any tours coming around? Yeah. So we're working on some stuff for, you know, early 2024. Um, you know, I, we don't have anything live uh, or any shows booked at the moment. Um, this is kind of a weird time of year for all of us individually in, in our in our day to day lives outside of Sages. Um, we're all pretty individually busy right now. We just got back from L.A., um, played, right. the, played the Knitting Factory in uh, North Hollywood, I guess, about a month ago. Nice. Uh, that's probably I mean, that that's the last show. We're, we're pretty selective. I mean, not to get. Out to outside of Sages, because I know that's why we're here, what we're talking about. But but all of us individually, like we've all been in signed bands, like we've all like kind of lived that life and and you know, like I said, had the record deals and, and done all the touring. Oh, legit, the really. These and so this is more of a passion project. Not to say that we don't like put any effort into it as far as like promoting it or anything like that, but like like where I'm going with this is like we don't we're not really chasing anything. So like we're not out there trying to like, you know sleep on floors and pay our dues and, 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 you know, uh, all that kind of, I mean, not that they're like, I mean, if opportunity, you, got kids. you way, ain't trying to do that shit. You got kids. I mean, it's, it's all good. And like, I mean, that's the world that we come from, but like, uh, as far as playing live, like going out and, and putting the effort into playing live, like I think the show's really got to make sense for us to, to, to want to do it. I mean, and I, I don't mean it has to be the biggest, best show ever. Like, Oh, we're not going to do it unless we open up for, you know, Metallica. And I'm not saying that, but it's just, it's gotta be like, we really have to like want, want to do it or, or there's gotta be some kind of purpose and like opportunity in it for us. Otherwise it's like, we love each other so much that like, we'd rather just invite people to our studio and play. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Like it, it's, it's really, I mean, I'm not to sound, like, I don't know, like so dramatic or like, like I'm, you know, whatever, but like, it's, it really is like, there really is a purity there. Like, we're just like, we play, I mean, you know, we'll have stretches where we're playing, you know, we'll play a handful of shows, like, you know, in a really short amount of time and it just happened to work out that way. And then we've got stretches where like, we didn't play for eight months, you know, as far as live. 
you know and it's like a lot of that is like we like we kind of get sick of playing sacramento i mean we've all been playing music in sacramento for you know i mean a long time and and as a as a local band i think that gets a little wearing and i think as our fans have gotten older with us it gets harder for like them to get out because you know now they're older they're older kids they've got responsibilities so it's like you know going and playing a, a wednesday night at a bar you know at 10 p.m it's like well you know 15 20 years ago we probably would have had the place sold out now it's like oh dude i'll catch you next time man i got the kids tonight or what you know what i mean so it's like well then why even do it like we'll just play in our studio you know i completely respect that brother i mean yeah it, it's i had somebody say in, in the industry i'm in i had somebody like hey are you coming out to this gala event i'm like what day they're like wednesday i'm like i got my podcast and Right. Even if I wasn't doing my podcast, you're not getting me out on a Wednesday night at eight o'clock. Like, no, I've, I've got to, I'm not doing that. Like, right. Because, yeah. Now, having said that, I'm going to sound like a complete hypocrite because we are working on some stuff to do um, early in 2024. Like I said, maybe heading into the spring. Um, nothing that I can really say right now because it's, it's all just, it's, it's, I won't say early stages. Yeah, I won't say it's speculative. Like it, it's it's it like there's some legitimacy to it, but it's like I I mean I I don't want to lead people down the wrong path. So we'll I, see. I, I, yeah, I I respect that completely. Now I am I am gonna put you a, a little bit on the spot. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna go to we're gonna and maybe this won't be fantasy land. <laughs> and if it's not fantasy land, I have there. I told you the rules for the show beforehand, right? Remember, nothing's right. off limits. Yep. everybody's welcome and only gets to be one asshole and that's me <laughs> there sure. is there is some other rules there are hidden rules that that if you ever get to walk the red carpet at an event you have to call me Absolutely. and invite me onto the red carpet All right it's being recorded right now so um it's done recorded and right now and you said absolutely so yep. that's important to me <laughs> and if you're ever on a late night show playing like Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel or something like that you have to say hey this is for Sean of the above the bar podcast uh, all right i That's i just fair. need i need that like it's just my ego it's completely it, my ego man that, that's fair i'm stoked you're even taking the time so absolutely man that's I cool mean, oh, that, yeah. that's from a, <laughs> but is there like like for you i i think a little bit about back in the day like growing up in baltimore and my buddies that are on here Nate and everything the venues there were always you either played at Hammerjack, right? Or you got a sneaker, you got a sneak, <laughs> sneaky behind yeah, you. That's Who's a little, sneaky? that's our little dog, dude. <laughs> right, let me see, dude, for a minute. I got to see, dude. Can I see, dude? Yeah, I have a corgi, <laughs> so I'm all about the dogs. Let me see, dude. Dude, what's up? And he's, oh, look at him. Dudes are, dudes are a little Frenchy. Oh, look at you, dude. You, got, <laughs> you have small ears for a Frenchie, brother. That's, yeah, I'm digging yeah. it. Yeah, might be the camera angle. But he, he, he's he got good shoulders for a Frenchie. He's a, yeah. He's, he's a he's a thick neck Frenchie. I'm digging it. out, yeah. <laughs> De I'm digging him. So but is is there a venue for you? And, and, and what I was getting to is like Hammerjacks used to be the spot in Baltimore, and then it became um, Steel Town that okay. kind of took over. Here in the Albany area where I'm at now, it's uh, Northern Lights, it's called. Those are kind of – like that's where you're going to see – Gotcha. Yeah. And still play live venues. I don't go to them anymore because I want a seat. I'm old. Right. Uh, I got bad knees. I want a chair. I'm not standing there for three hours <laughs> like I used to and being like <laughs> – Right, right. Like I saw Ministry, Separatora, and Helmet all together in one show. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and like I'm talking old school separator, like 1990, oh, okay. 91 yeah. like real legit, yeah, uh, separator. But is there any venue, even if it's something out there in Cali or or anywhere in the U.S. where you're like, hey, either this is our favorite place to play, or like this would be for you as Matt, I made it place. Yeah, and and I mean. um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to age myself too much here, but um, age away, brother. We're old. So th those venues are are long gone in Sacramento, as far as like the venues that I consider. I might have to. Oh, give me just a second. Yep. Now you got to leave, brother. I mean, yeah. you were good. We thought we thought we had you for a minute. 
Um, yeah, the, the, those venues in, in Sacramento specifically, you know, as far as for me personally, like the iconic venues that I consider, the, the, those are long gone. But there are venues here in Sac that we love playing. I mean, so after I just get done saying that, you know, we get kind of tired of playing Sac. But um, so there, there's a spot in Roseville called Goldfield. Um, and there's a spot downtown called Old Ironsides. Now, they're two completely like opposite sides of the spectrum. Goldfield is like a really refined kind of big room. I mean, like, you know, it's got a, an LED screen behind for all the bands that like put their logo up on it and like big sound holds like six to 700 people. Like, I mean, it's like, you know, and then Old Ironsides is it's a it's a venue that's been here since long before you know i've been playing music in this town so um but it's like it's a little tiny bar little alley you know a, a long alley behind you know alongside the bar and then there's a little tiny stage i mean like you know you you put your hand up and you can like touch the ceiling above the stage oh. and the stage itself is like eight inches and like but but we love playing there because you know it's just it's a great little room and it, it's you know so those those two venues kind of stick out to me not to say that there aren't other venues um there's a really you know there's a bigger venue here in sac called ace of spades which is i believe it's owned by live nation now um i'm sorry you know, to hear that. You know big rooms are fun to play when there are people there when there's no one there it's like right, when it's echoing through it it's not it's yeah, not the same animal. No vibe you know so that's why, you know, I mentioned old iron sites. Cause it's like, you know, you put 60 or 70 people in, in that little bar and it's like, it's awesome. It's a great vibe. In fact, we just played there. La God, when did we play there a few months ago? And, um, it was, it was great. Like it's real intimate and everybody's kind of crowded around and like, it, it's, I would much rather do that than some empty room to, you know, that holds a thousand people to like a hundred, you know, yeah, that, that room where it's like, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, there's like yeah. three there's like three old groupies are like i remember when you're like, right exactly you know or they're like shut up we're trying to talk here you know i mean it's like, <laughs> play free bird yeah you know <laughs> that guy's there right well i i get that though um and now this is an important question nate always asked this question i think it's a legitimate question okay he asked this in some way shape or form of all guests maybe at some point i'm going to get nate his own bumper from when he asked this and then I can play the bumper and then, then we can ask this question, Nate, you do graphic design, come up with a bumper, a good one. I want something that it sounds like somebody's chewing and we'll call it Nate's corner. So, and it'll just be a voice. It'll be like, gar, gar, gar. and then it'll bump, jump in with some teeth and it'll, teeth and it'll go Nate's corner. I like All it. right. So I like the sound of it and it'll make sense here in a second. Cause right now you're going, what the fuck is okay. this? Okay. All right. So Nate wants to know what is your favorite meal for after a show? Like, <laughs> like, do you have like an after show or, and even if it's not like one particular, is there like a city when you're in over your travels and, and being signed with other places where you're like, Hey, when I would go to, you know, Utah, I was eating Rocky mountain oysters or whatever right. it was. Right. <laughs> I. Dude, that's a really good question. And I wish I had like a just a Nats on specific answer. I can tell you that no matter what, post show, pre show, during the show, I'm always down for some straight up street tacos. Like, I don't oh. care if it's carnitas, I don't care if it's asada, I don't care if it's media, like any any street taco, anytime, I'm I'm with it. <laughs> See, and I think that's a very that's a very California answer. It, it is, it is. <laughs> I mean, is there a spot in Sacramento that wins for the street taco? Um, so for me personally, I can't say that I know. I don't know enough spots. I mean, there are they are everywhere. There are a couple of of, of food trucks, like mobile food trucks, that I could eat at every single day, and I'm sure they're not really well known, but they are amazing <laughs> you dig the i love burrito tacos yep i love i love anything birria yeah <laughs> See, you even said it better than me <laughs> i say it like a guy from baltimore like <laughs> like i you know what i normally call them is dippy tacos yeah yeah <laughs> like because i don't know any like look it's a french dip it's a Pretty chicago much. dip it's a dippy taco don't yeah, get yeah, fancy yeah. About it. no yeah <laughs> it's yeah i i, I got you, turned on to it I, but yeah <laughs> Well, I will say I'm not like, you know, 
that's only because I have a I have a really close friend of mine that um, is is Mexican. And I mean, so I get kind of spoiled. He takes me to some cool spots and like oh, no, just yeah. being with him all the time. I just I've I've gone from birria to birria. <laughs> you know, I'm like, as a birria taco. Yeah. <laughs> like I, and I say it just like an idiot from Baltimore. I'm like, yeah. And listen, I just, Aaron, let me get one of them birria tacos. Yeah. We'll go oh. ahead. It's got that dippy sauce in it. Right. <laughs> I joke around with I joke around with my buddy too, and I I play that guy. I'm always like, "Hey man, what's up with them chimichangas, boy? Give me <laughs> let me get them. Let me get them chimichangas over there." But you know what? I can't stand, and I cannot explain to you how many. Being in the Marine Corps, I had a ton of friends that were Tex Mex or what do they call them? Uh, whatever that right term is for Tex Mexes. Uh, but in uh, California, Mexicans and right. straight up like. I had buddies who were straight up like, yeah, no, man, look, I, my family immigrated here and they all tried to get me to drink horchata. I would, I would rather suck on paint than drink horchata. Horchata is fucking gross. <laughs> right. That's there funny. is, there is nothing good about like, and they love it. They're like, Hey man, there's horchata. I'm like, Right. Oh, you didn't have that accent three minutes ago. Right. Now, right. All of a sudden, you say horchata, and you're like, "Hey, it's horchata," and I'm like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> Bro, like, stop. like the worst was. Have you ever met a Chicago Mexican? No, no. Because it's called Chicago. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, from, yeah. Uh, from Chicago. Chicago. From Chicago. <laughs> and he would. There was a guy I served with. He would. I'd be like, "Hey, man, where are you originally from?" Well, man, I grew up in Chicago. Like. Bro, like, why do you say it all weird? Right, right. And he's like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, you, it, you don't talk that way any other moment, but when you say that city, <laughs> so that was the thing. That's funny. So, getting back, getting back on track here for a minute, because if it's food related, I can go, I go far left. <laughs> now, I'm curious, and you can tell me it's none of my business. What's the day job? So yeah, so I uh, I have long since uh, been playing music full time. Um, so okay, yeah, um, I've been in the glamorous world of propane um, over the past hey, hey Bobby, decade and a half. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the propane business. Um, everything from route management to okay. system installs, delivery. I mean, I've been doing it a long, long time. So. Um, After the show's over and everything, you can talk to me about it. I really want to get like some propane inserts for the house. Oh, nice. <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I need to do and all that, but that's a whole nother thing. But I'm always curious about that because you you talked about, I mean, you said you were signed, like legit signed to 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 play, you know, and, yep. and I've talked to a lot of musicians and, and we're getting ready to close the bar up here here soon, but I don't want to lose track of that. And I'm I'm joking around about it, but it almost feels to me recently, I've heard this more often, that they kind of just sign bands and not taking anything away from the band, but these these record companies or producers or whoever's doing the signing, it almost feels like they're, they're bulk signing bands as much as they, let me sign this one, let me sign this one, let me sign this one, just to get, so that somebody can say, oh, wait a sec, they made that song, that's mine now. Was How was that signing process? So when I was when I was in playing in, in sign bands, I mean, we're going all the way back to the mid to late 90s. So, I mean, the music industry wasn't even what it is today. I mean, there was, you know, the Internet was in its infancy, um, you know, so you were really it was really about building the story um, through playing live and and and, you know, kind of creating your your fan base like organically and selling records out of the back of your van and and like really you know doing that kind of thing and um so you know for for my band specifically um you know being from sacramento sacramento kind of became a hotbed um in the mid 90s with you know i mean bands like deftones and cake and far getting signed out of here papa roach you know my band eventually like there there was a good what was your band don't don't skip the name the band i was in was called simon says okay uh, and, um, you know, we were never really like a mainstream success, um, you know, as far as like, you know, the, the levels of those bands I was just talking about. Um, but we were, you know, we were in that wave. And, um, you know, so it back to your question, you know, what what was that process like? It was 
It was long. I mean, that, that band, you know, Simon says we were together for, you know, about a decade and, and, you know, six or seven years of that was, you know, pre record deal. Um, and, but, you know, back then bands, you know, record, there were still record labels. Like there are, you know, I, I don't claim to know anything about the music industry at this point. I'm so far removed from it. And like everything revolves around social media and, and, and streams and, and content creation and all, like, it's really not even about the music anymore from my perspective. Um, so, you know, it, it, you know, but back then, you know, there were definitely parts, obviously it's, it's, it's about marketing. It's about content creation. It's, it's just, a, it really revolved around the music. You know what I mean? And it, it, you know, you're doing it in a more organic way rather than like a virtual way, like we are now, you know, so, but the process was, it was, it was a whirlwind, you know, um, you know, and with with sages, I think that's kind of alluding back to what we were talking about, you know, a, a little while ago in the podcast here is like, like, I think that's partly why we're just so kind of insulated and maybe protective in particular about like what we do when it comes to playing live and what we present to the world. You know, I mean, we're a small band. It's not like, you know, we're making waves in the sense of like, oh, we release a single and, oh, you know, we get a million streams overnight or anything like that. Um, but because we like, I guess where I'm going with this is like, I think we all admit that we don't really understand how it works. And I don't think that, I think that we're, we're willing to do so much before it starts to feel like it's not even really about the music anymore. Like none of us are really comfortable, like, being Instagram guys or personalities or TikTok personalities. Like, like none of us, when we get in the studio, not one of us ever remembers, Hey dude, set up the camera so we can get some content for TikTok or like, we'll go four hours of doing stuff. And we're like, Oh, we didn't get anything. Oh, like who's posted on Instagram in the last two weeks. Oh, I forgot. We even have one. Like, I mean, it sounds like really uh, like a uh, shitty, but it's like, like, no, I get it. Like, it's just like, we're just so much about the music that it's like all this extra stuff. We're just like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you know, so it's like compare, you know, asking about our bands from back in the 90s and today. It's like, dude, the, the experience is just completely different. You know, you, you got to find yourself, you know, some either 23 to 25 year old uh kid who's like so tied into it oh totally. understands it and just let them just let them run with it and then the next thing you know it'll be like something out of a movie where where you wake up and you're like dude my phone is like dead i don't understand why it's because you got a hundred thousand hits on instagram for a song or something like that and it's like, it's, it's getting into that, that mindset of like thinking in those terms. Like I have an 18 year old son. Like I, like I said, he's gone right now. He's out doing his thing. It's like perfect candidate for exactly what you're right. talking about. He's, he's tied into TikTok. He's tied into Snapchat. I mean, he lives on social media. I see he's got drums. I saw yeah, he drums. got drums. He plays guitar. I mean, he's got a re he's got recording equipment. Like, I mean, he could probably record us. You know what I mean? Like kid knows no more than I do about this stuff. And it's like, but Start calling him a slacker and be like, listen, you're a slacker. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's like, I, 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 you know, I mean, I, I'm sure there's, there's definitely like a, a boundary that I don't want to overstep where it's like, I'm just like making him fuel my, you know, your dad's dream. But, it, but I don't even, yeah, but I don't even think to go like, Hey, Canyon, would you mind coming out to practice tonight? And maybe just like getting some, I don't even think on those terms. Like, it's like, that's, I like, think what I'm saying is like, I, I don't get even, it capacity for it <laughs> you know what but i think there's something to be said about that where um you come from that world in the, in the same world i did listening to music where an interesting person to quote is vanilla ice he was interviewed not long ago and he basically bashed music today and he was like look you guys go online people make one or two songs you never hear the album. You never hear everything they do. And I'm paraphrasing how he said it, sure. but he basically says we had our generation. I was born. I don't know what year you were born. I'm born in 76. Right. Uh, we, we had to go out and go, go to the record store, 
talk to the guy. I was just talking about this the other day. Talk to the guy behind the counter and be like, what's new? And he'd be like, yo, tell me what kind of music you're into. Let me understand what you like. Right. And he would, and you'd be like, well, I like Nirvana. I'm into Screaming Trees. Um, I just, dude, you. I wish you could see what's to my right right now, though. <laughs> so we bought a CD player. Oh, and, nice. And I broke out my old CDs. Heck yeah. For, for my teenage, my 14 year old son to, right. to see what I've got and uh, Flaming Lips. Oh, you know, yep, absolutely. I forgot how hard they fucking played. <laughs> like, like right. the stuff that we listened to back then that was supposed to be like, this was just alternative, like blah blah blah. And then right. you're like, man, Lemonhead still actually kind of jammed yeah. back in the day. Yeah. yeah, totally. And now, like, my kids like, Dad, I want to go see Boy with Uke, and I'm like, what is that? And then he plays it for me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I- it's like we are we are our parents now, you know what we I mean? We are. I remember showing my dad corn, like you know, I mean, free, oh. and he was just like, and my dad was a musician, and he's just like, mm, yeah, it sounds like he's trying to take a shit, you know? <laughs> and and like at the time I was just like, what are you How talking about? Like, the greatest thing I've ever heard, you know. Now I look back and I'm like, I still love corn. Don't get me wrong, but I'm like, uh, I could kind of see what he meant if like yeah, that's the it. first introduction you know what i mean and like kind of what you're you know kind of talking about now it's like with the, how people listen to music today i mean it, yeah. it's like it's a single based market and it's like it it's i mean the attention span of the average listener or content viewer or whatever it's like it's like this big so what people have figured out to do is deliver that much content because people are passive and i i don't hate it i'm not like oh i i just i haven't adapted yet i i just don't understand it no i can appreciate it i'm just i'm not there yet you know the length of a reel yep exactly the length of a reel right and and it's so interesting i mean we're we're definitely on on the same page brother because i i was i had a a gentleman he's and i'm born in 77 sorry i didn't answer you (laughs) we're we're right yeah so we're in the same boat you just (laughs) That shit's died. Your beard's so died. <laughs> no, um, it's not. But what? You can see some grays. Bro, look at this thing. Look at this thing. <laughs> like, I got the skunk going on. I love it. I love it. <laughs> my beard. But uh, I had a gentleman on the other day. Um, uh, not not that Chris Brown. I can't think of his name right now. But he's another California-based uh, musician. Lives up in Portland now. And, and we were talking about this. And and I, I, I think you'll appreciate this. When we when we heard a song on the radio and decided we were going to go buy that album, you probably talked to at least three people before you bought that album to see if you knew someone who had it right. and what they thought about it. Cause you almost never wanted to be the first one to buy it unless you were like, like when smells like teen spirit came out, never mind that album. You couldn't have, yeah, I, I can still remember calling 98 Rock in Baltimore right. where I grew up and being like, "Do you have this?" And the and the DJ in the VJ or DJ on the radio was like, "Yeah, we don't have it yet. We're working on getting it." Right. That's how like that genre of music hadn't even like impacted there yet. Right. But could you remember fifteen dollars oh. to buy a CD? Yep. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. And it was an event, like you had to plan it out. You'd like, you know, I'd mow my lawn or whatever. And my, you know, stepbrother and I, like we'd, you know, ride our bikes up to, you know, Tower Records with, you know, and, and like, you know, we'd throw down 30, 35 bucks and get two CDs. I mean, I remember buying, you know, I mean, I think my first CD was for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge when CDs actually became a thing. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I mean, I had, (laughs) you know, but the actual, actual first physical CD that I bought and I just remember like, it was like an event and the packaging and, you know, it was like the long cardboard box and like, you know. Oh, oh yeah. Oh God, like, I remember the long box yeah. to make, to make it seem like there was more to it than what yeah. was actually yeah. happening. Yeah. So my, I can actually, so it wasn't, I don't, God, I think my first CD actually came out of, uh, when, from Columbia house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I- get nine cds yeah, for a penny for like 99 cents or whatever yeah, that was my yeah. first ones was columbia house but i can tell you my first vinyl 
Okay. And it was because of my cousin Kim was a huge fan of theirs. Right. And she's 10 years older than I am. Was um Judas Priest British Steel oh, uh, wow. with the the with the razor on the ed, yep. on the cover. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. I, I was I buying uh asking my dad to buy me Judas Priest Defenders of the Faith in yeah. a in a in like a record bin at rate at like a grocery store. It's at like a Rayleigh's or a Bel Air out here on the West coast that we wow. have. And I, <laughs> just like, yeah. 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 I mean, that was, was the, the defenders of the faith is a great album and the cover. <laughs> that was another thing back in the day, right, the artwork and the art. Yeah. Like we yeah. have so lost. <laughs> totally. I, so again, I told you, I have a 14 year old who's really just starting to discover the music that we grew up on. Sure. We were over at, I can't even remember what the name of the place is. It's in the mall, which I hate the mall now. I've definitely gotten old. I fucking hate the mall. Um, but we're in there and they've got all these bins of vinyl. And now everything's like, it's 180 grit vinyl or whatever it is. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. We, just, we just get vinyl. And, right. and I'm seeing the prices on these vinyls and I'm like, somebody's got like every one of these that I could buy them for a dollar at a yard sale. I don't. Yeah. But they had almost every iron maiden and I loved iron maiden. Sure. And I thought to myself, do you remember how cool it was to see what Eddie would be doing on the cover? Cause that's the, the, the zombie skeleton thing is yep. Eddie for those who don't yep. know that, but seeing like, what are they putting Eddie into now? He's in a fighter jet. He's sure. like jumping over Bob wire. He's coming out of, you know, coming out. What was it out of the, the uh, grave in one of the albums. Right. Right. It's like, I mean, I get, I guess what we're talking about really is, is it's everything that was accompanying the music back then that, yeah, that would, experience. that would be the content. Right. So it was like, yeah. like the artwork and, and the layout and getting the lyrics, it, you know, and, and what color the record. Well, I mean, records didn't really start getting colored until later on, but like. Not true. Not true. My okay. first wife had her aunt's album collection. She had all the Apple records from the Beatles with green vinyl. Oh, really? Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah, it's like, green vinyl. It, Think about that. Yeah, that's cool. But like that, I mean, that was really the content back then that was kind of like, you know, going coinciding and, and, and going with the music. Now I feel like, well, the content now is just what you're, you're putting up on your, you know, social media or whatever. It's right. just, I think from my perspective, it outshadows the music. So like, it's almost like the music is secondary at this point And the content is primary. It's like, yeah. Oh, like I just, I'm going to follow this band because of their content or this artist because of their content. And, Oh, they just happen to have a couple of cool songs also. You know right. what I mean? Like it's so much, there's so much more to think about and to like, I respect the modern day artist. I mean, because it's, there's so much more involved, you know what I mean? Like to make yourself relevant, you and know, they make no money on their music. Not their money, their, they make it folks look into it. We're not going to get too deep into that, but that's <laughs> the whole thing I've learned about that. They have to do something like 30,000 downloads per Spotify to oh, make dude. what they made on one CD back in yeah, the day. Nothing. Yeah. But, but look, folks, if you're finding Matt through me or me through Matt, you know, Sages. And again, if you're looking to find out what they've got going on, it's at We Are Sages on all their social media. See what they've got going on. See what they have happening. Uh, if you're in the Sacramento area, obviously you can find them out there. They've got. And the new song that I jacked up that I did not put up, folks, I screwed it up. But I played one that I'm telling you right now. If it's it, it's an older song, matter of time, but it's a banger all day long. Don't get that twisted in any way, shape, or form. So make sure you, you're you're finding. It. But again, if you're finding me through Matt or Matt through me through Matt or Matt through me, make sure you take and you go find us on our social media and you give us that like, that follow, that share. We might be talking a little bit, you know, as a couple of old farts about how things used to be, but we both understand how things work today. So you giving that like and that following that share is how that sage music gets out of there. That's how he doesn't have to tell Bobby about how stakes are supposed to be made. <laughs> they ask their stake in another way. Uh, he doesn't have to talk to Bobby about how his stakes are being made. He doesn't have to do. Oh, we lost Matt. Did I lose you, Matt? I thought I lost you for a second. But make sure you give making that happen because. 
this is how this is how we grow grow both uh. of our net. no don't he we were having audio earlier we didn't lose you i didn't lose oh, you did i lose you at the end no don't say i lost you matt we have <laughs> minutes <laughs> matt are you can you can't hear me ah. matt i'm gonna try to type I'm sorry you. matt this is you can hear me thank you sad. sean I can't hear don't, you, but thank you. <laughs> oh my God, we lost the sound last minute. You got to be kidding me! Oh my God, Matt, can you figure out what you did last time, Matt? Like Matt, Matt, look down there, Matt. Look over here, Matt. Over there, over there, over there. He can't hear shit from me right now. He lost all the sound. I think I'm screwed. Uh, he lost all the sound. This is not good. And I just spilled liquor on my uh, Apple mouse. So it's a hell of a mess over here. But again, folks, but we're not going to get a final word from him. Uh, maybe I can. But like, let me set, find my phone here for a second, because this is going to go over. What if like, I go um, out and come back in? Let Hold on a sec. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let's see. Hold all on. Right. Bob. Oh no, we oh, see we're gonna extend this show, folks. We're gonna extend this show for just a couple of minutes because poor Matt, we lost him. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is how this works. So let's see if let's see if it fixed it. Did it fix it? I can hear you again. <laughs> oh, we got him back for just a half a second. Look at that, and it didn't even sound like I was a pure idiot at all. All those things. I was getting ready to text Bob and be like, Bob, tell him, tell him, don't disappear. <laughs> uh, so again thank you so much for being on um go check out the new album folks again stages we are sages see what they've got going on uh real quick next week folks we got crazy aunt rose on you may remember her son clay aunt rose pops on all the time she's got a book that she wrote about raising two sons as a single mom one who is talk about a, a drummer brother clay k-l-a-e Okay. That dude's a fucking beast. Actually, want to know who else uh, is a good friend of the show? Who's, Who's a drummer? And I know you'll know the band when I say it, but you <laughs> may not know this iteration of it. Uh, I'm good buddies with the current drummer of Black Flag. Oh, really? Isaiah's oh. Gill. Okay. The, the dude's a monster on the Oh, drum. that's awesome. Yeah. But Heck it's yeah. so funny. Like, he's the current drummer of a right. band that we would have been like, Black Flag. Right, right. I think yeah. they're actually coming through SAC here pretty soon. In fact, my old band toured with Rollins for a little bit. Yeah. He would, he's a he's a strange bird. I can't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like, I get it. Like, you were always like pretty politically charged and everything, but yeah. you know, he's a he's a different. <laughs> he's different. That's all I can say. <laughs> he ain't listening to this shit, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and if he is listening to this. You're all your power to me. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like if Henry Rollins is listening to this and he's like, "Hey man, what do you mean by I'm a little different?" Right. <laughs> well, come on the show, Henry. I'll bump next week's guest. I love Crazy Aunt Rose, but I think she would be like, if I was like Aunt Rose, talk to Clay. He'll understand. Henry Rollins wants to take your spot. <laughs> then nobody's gonna be upset. Oh yeah. But I know you've listened. We talked about this before the show. To all, I think this is 211. I have to look. All 211 episodes, and don't log off on me afterwards. We got to talk for just a moment okay. uh, a after the show. But at the end of every episode, the guest always gets the last word. So, Matt, what is the final word for today? Go listen to Sages. Go stream Sages. Go check out Sages. Please, please, please. At We Are Sages across the board on all socials. All righty, folks. Be sure to push your stool in. This has been a Second Front Podcast presentation found on Apple, Spotify, and wherever podcasts can be found. 